So we'll start by coming out of the Grease Pencil objects and just creating a new group. And we'll call that group. Uh, I'll just call it Rig. And it just means that all of our armature objects can go in there separate from all of these pieces here. And we'll just go to the Add menu and we'll create a single bone. There we go, and it's appeared there at the origin. At this point, you can make a choice about whether or not you want to leave your grease pencil object hanging down there like that, or you might want to just take them all and shift them up a bit so that they're a little bit more, you know, up and above the grid. That's entirely up to you. I think I'll just leave mine there like that for now just to make life a bit easier. So, this is my spine object. Now, I'm not going to move this in object mode because I'll end up with a bunch of transforms here, which when applied will just cause a little bit of confusion. So I'm going to go straight into edit mode and move my joints around in here. Much better practice than moving it around in object mode because there can be a lot of unforeseen consequences which uh, can often baffle and confuse people. So I'll put that there and I'm going to just immediately give this a name. It's going to be called Spine. Right, let me grab the top now and I'm going to take this up to the head. So I'll press E and then press Z to lock it and just take it up to the head. So I think I'll put it about there. Looks good to me. Right, now I'm going to click on this and I'm going to subdivide it like that just to get a nice even break. I'll press G and lock it again and just say that the neck is going to be about there. Right, I'd like a few more bones in here as well. So I'm going to click on that one and subdivide that too. And again, just using G and Z to lock, I think I'll take that to the chest area there. Wait, 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 let me think about this. Yeah, I think I'll probably go there. So the tiger can bend there, the tiger can bend there, it's got that there, and it's got a neck up there. Maybe just put one more in here just for the sake of it. Just in case you want that last little bit of flexible control up at the top so that it's kind of tapering. So yeah, I'll put that there. Wonderful, let me come out of edit mode and just have a look at this. All right, so it's sort of resting there above the tiger. Now, believe it or not, it's not that important how far away or close this is. It can obviously have an impact if you're stupidly far away like that and out of line because, you know, you're, it's going to be uh, more of a, an ergonomics problem where you're bending things and moving things around and just thinking, what is all this about? Why is, you know, why is the tiger all weird? But you don't need to worry about your, you don't need to worry if this body bit here is just slightly out from your body piece. The head's intersecting, which again is absolutely fine. What counts is that from the position you'll be animating, which for me is flat on like this, the bones are in the right place as far as the X and Z axis are concerned, but the depth isn't that important. You might want to think about this in terms of um, the automatic weights part that comes later. Automatic weights for grease pencil objects are really in need of a lot of work. They just they just don't work. All of the weighting that we'll get to, we'll have to do manually. And just think about those awful weighting tools that I was showing you before. We're in for a treat. Right, so I put those in place. It's really important to stay on top of your labeling and make sure everything is in good nick. Now, had I just extruded from the top upwards, everything would have had the right O1s and O2s and O3s on it. But I did not do that. I uh, I sort of subdivided instead, which has meant that things are going to be slightly out of whack. I know that's spine, so this one is spine O1, handy. Let's have a look at this one. Right, so we'll just call that one O2. Let's have a look at this one. O3. And then I'll just call that one head. I think I'll call this one... No, I'll leave it like that. Actually, I'll leave it like that. Right, so that is that bit done. Excellent. Now I think I'll put some pieces in place for the ear. Now it'd be really handy if I could just see the wireframe of this grease pencil object. So I'm going to come down here and turn on the wireframe mode. It just enables me to see where the joins are, even though it's a little bit of an eyesore. Right, so I'm going to actually make a brand new uh, bone at this point which should have appeared yep right in the middle there now it's difficult to see and that can be annoying so I'm just going to back pedal a little bit and come out of there and I'm actually going to take I'm going to hold shift and right click to 
put the cursor roughly where I want it. And then I'm going to press Shift A to add that bone instead of coming up to this menu. Both do the same thing, it's just a bit quicker. So now I've got that there, I'm going to take the head of the bone and just move it up to there like that. Now this should, yep, still be on that flat plane that we were on a moment ago. So that's all good. That's all good. I'd actually like this to bend from, you know, in the middle there. I'd like that to sort of be where it comes from. So I'll do that. And then um, I think I'll name this ear just to get me off to a good start before I then subdivide it like that. And then I'm going to take this and just move it up. Now, if you want this to all stay in a straight line, you would, of course, normally press the lock keys like this. But the lock keys are up and down, so it's not very helpful. So you want to come over here to global and just set it to normal. Normal will follow the length of the joint instead. So if I give um, if I give this head a click like that, press X, you see we're going that way now. So if I press Y, we're going up and down the joint. Right, so this one is called ear. So I'm going to call it, it's screen R, but it's character left. So I'm going to go ear L. And then here, it's called ear 001. So I'm just going to call it ear L dot 001. There we go. So that's those two good. Now, whilst I'm at this stage, I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to shift click on the head. And I'm going to parent them together. Now you press control P to do that. If you click connect, then the root of the ear bone will shoot over to the tail of the head bone, or the head of the head bone, shall I say. And they are stuck together like that. Not great. So instead, when you press Control P, click on Keep Offset. And you can see the two options down here. One does that, the other does that. That dotted line just reminds you that they're attached. But what it does mean when you're in pose mode and you move the head around it'll take the ears with it like this let's have a quick look in here and see what we've been building spine 01 pull this out a little bit just hold shift and click to completely collapse the menu looking good so far just a quick one right off the bat rather than creating the other side of the rig we'll always use the symmetrize option symmetrize as you can see here copies it across to the other side like a line of symmetry like that and whilst it's doing that it also swaps the label so it's now called ear.r as opposed to over here which is ear.l of course you have to make sure everything's selected when you do that so just shift select so you've got them both symmetrize and across they go it's important to note that that happened across the x-axis so again look at the description that comes up here it says it enforces symmetry make copies of the selection or use existing minus x to plus x. So you're working in the y-axis like that, this won't necessarily work. Right, so we've got our heads, we've got our ears, that's great. Now I'm going to start placing some joints for the mouth and for the eyes. We'll go with the eyes first, and again, I'll, I'll just keep on working on the right side and then symmetrize over to the left. But I'll do that at the very end. Now I want these bones, they don't need to be that specific, but I would like them to be relatively uh, spot on with the vertex points that are behind them. So I'm going to go to the grease pencil object which is just behind. I'm going to press tab on it so I can go into it using the um, I can go into it using the edit mode for grease pencil, which will then give me access to the uh, different vertex points. Now I just need this open and that open so that I can see what's going on. And I also need to skip over to the dope sheet. And I'll just get that out of the way so you can see my shortcuts. Um, now I'm here, I'm going to flick over to the grease pencil. Right, my setting for uh, layers is currently on auto lock in active layers, which means when I click on different layers, they unlock, but all the others remain locked. So I'm looking for the eye in this case, which hopefully I'll find, yep, there it is. Uh, but sorry, I'm not after the eye, I'm after the pupil. So the pupil is there, excellent. Right, there's another add-on which I find really helpful, which adds this little option here, select points on layer. When you click on that, it just selects all of the points that are on the pupil layer. Unfortunately, I've got spec and pupil 
in separate places here. I think I might just merge those down actually because there's not really any need for them to be separate. Right, so select all points on layer and that gives me these two. Perfect. I'm just going to deselect that one because I don't need it. Now that I've got this selected, I can hold shift, press S and say cursor to selected. And it just places the cursor right in the middle of all of this. I might just try it so that it's right in the middle of these instead. So again, cursor to selected, placed it right in the middle of those two. Excellent. Um, just a quick note, if you want this select points on layer add-on, it's as simple as the other one. It's just over on the um, on my GitHub. You can just pop over to the Gary Cars main page and select all points on layers. Add-on is right there, and you can just download it in the same way that you downloaded the other one by clicking here, download raw file, and then enable it as an add-on, and that button will appear. Right. Now that my 3D cursor is in the right place, I'm going to come out of edit mode and back into edit mode for the armature. And now when I press um, Shift A, my bone arrives in the perfect position. I think I'll just scale that down slightly, but I'll just flick onto 3D cursor so that it scales down, you know, in there. F2, pupil, dot, oh, not R, L. Right. So that's my pupil, excellent. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the eye. So I'll come up here, and there's I. And I think I'll just click this time rather than using the um, rather than using the select points because I don't want to grab the other side as well. Shift S and cursor to selected. Now I'm in the center of there, which is quite handy because I don't want to get stuck with this joint over the top of the other joint. So now I've got that, I'll go back out of here into the armature and control A and the armature will always arrive wherever the 3D cursor has been placed. Right, so I'll just make that a little bit bigger like that just again to help distinguish between the two of them. And I'll call this one I dot L. There we go. Right. I'm also going to have a controller which grabs onto both of the eyes at once. Um, sometimes when I'm animating I might want to grab one eye by itself, make it bigger, make it smaller, which is what this is for. This one will grab the pupils and move them around, but I do want to have one that just grabs the two eyes together and basically parents over the top. So um, I'll go back out of here into the grease pencil, just grab both eye points and um, press Shift S and cursor to selected. So that's placed it right in the middle. I'm then going to come out of edit mode for that, into edit mode for the armature. Shift A and there it is, my eye controller in place. Excellent. I'll probably make that a little bit... Mm, actually no, no, I'll leave it as it is. Right, and we'll call this the eyes... Um, I'm going to go with underscore. I'm just going to go control. Excellent. Let's do a bit of parenting so that these things are in the right place. So the pupil will always want to follow the eye control. So I'll just control P those. So now wherever the eye goes, the pupil will go with it. The eye control will always want to follow the, or should I say, sorry, the IL will always want to follow the eye control. So control P and keep offset again. There we are. Let's jump into pose mode and just see how that's all working. So I've got a head here. If I move it around, the eye control is not following it. So I need to get that sorted out. Uh, if I gra grab the eye master controller and move it around, you can see the eye is following it. And if I grab the eye control, you can see the pupil follows it. And then the pupil is independent to move around by itself. Perfect. Okay. Let's sort this issue out. So we'll grab the eye controller, shift select the head controller and parent. Wonderful. Back in here. Everything's moving as you would hope. <laughs> Bit crazy. Right. That's that side done. Now I need to think about the, I'll call it the muzzle area of the character. I'm going to click on the grease pencil object, go to the edit mode. I'm going to come to the menu. There's muscle or one there. And I'm going to do select all points. And I'm going to tell the 3D cursor to just go to the center of that muscle. Excellent. Out of here into the armature, shift A, and have a new joint hiding behind it like that. So it's obviously annoying that that's hiding behind it like that. It makes it very difficult to see. 
When you're in edit mode you can turn on the x-ray toggle which will just enable you to see through and if you need to click on this but you can't quite get to it just try to click on one of the lines and it should get you there but you always just have to click a second time if you want to sort of get through so you'll when you click first you'll hit the head when you click a second time you'll hit the one underneath so this is the muzzle no oh, I spelled that wrong so this is the muzzle right excellent and I want that to be parented to the head so shift select the head control P and keep offset wonderful that's all that together now I noticed before when I tried to move the head around in pose mode it won't move because it's stuck like that that's just because it's connected to the top joint rather than being a keep offset so I'm gonna go back into edit mode click on the head joints and press alt P instead of control P alt P and I'm gonna say disconnect that bone so it's disconnected it now which is good and and even though I've unparented it the head bone is still attached to the neck bone as you can see there with a keep offset so it's just assumed that's what I want to do and in this case it's right so we'll go to pose mode we'll move this around and you can see it's taking the whole head with it click on the head by itself I can now freely move around like this and rotate about.